Thanks for the intro and also thanks the organizers for organizing this nice conference and also thanks for coming to my talk. Um, today I'm going to tell you about the results about in time course of you know uh, in time dilution and the channel simulation. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Mark Wildy from Louisiana and uh, it's based on this oops. It's based on these uh, two archive papers. Okay, so as you know, uh, entailment is central to uh, quantum information science, and I'll begin with very brief intro of entailment theory. So, uh, roughly speaking, this uh, a quantum state, bipartite quantum state is called entangled if it cannot be uh, written in the sum of these product states. And in time theory, the most natural set of free operations uh, for inter manipulation consists of local operation and classical communication, which is also known as LCC. And it's also well known that the set of this kind of operations has a very complicated structure. And from the angle that uh, entangled states cannot be created by LCC, and all these entangled states are considered as quantum resources. And inspired by the success of uh, in time theory, uh, people uh, consider or study further uh, general resource theory framework. And I will point uh, to this review paper by uh, Chitambra and Gore for more details about general resource theory. And the seminal ideas from uh, resource theory or in time theory has uh, are influencing like diverse areas, for example, like quantum thermodynamics, um, quantum coherence, and also the magic states for for tolerant quantum computation. And here, uh, motivated by the fact that entanglement is a key resource in quantum information processing, uh, a quantitative theory is highly desirable to fully explore its power. And then people introduce the concept of in time measure. Uh, to be a feasible in time measure, it ha has you know, at least satisfied two conditions. The first one is faithfulness, just means uh, this measure should equal to zero if and only if the state is separable. And another one is uh, monotonicity. Uh, this means after you uh, implement some uh, free operation like LCC, the entanglement should be uh, decreased or equal to the, the original entanglement. This is, you know, uh, motivated by the fact that uh, LCC cannot create entanglement. And there are some other conditions like convexity, additivity, and so on. Uh, in the past 20 years, actually, people uh, introduce a zoo of entanglement measures. And I will point to this uh, Plenio and the Virmani's review paper or Chris Tendo's thesis for more details about this zoo. And in the general resource theory framework, uh, resource measures actually can uh, provide precise and uh, like operationally meaningful uh, approach to quantify the physical resource. And here I will like briefly take you around uh, this zoo. Uh, first, there are you know uh, basic in time measures motivated by operational tasks, and considered uh, bell states are the currency of entanglement. And uh, these two these two tasks, you know, motivated by the transformation between your given state and uh, bell state, uh, it's called uh, in time distillation and in time dilution. And for in time dilution, uh, the in time cost E C actually quantifies the optimal rate you can transform bell states to your target state with the arbitrary high fidelity in the asymptotic limit of the copies. And a remarkable result is that this in time course is equal to the regularized in time formation. It was proved by uh, Hayden, Hordeck, and Taho in 2000. And on the other hand, uh, for the reverse task, uh, this in time distillation, uh, the distillable entailment just quantifies the rate uh, that you can like, obtain e bits from your target state, and this kind of these two intermeasures measures are very fundamental and operationally motivated. 
However, uh, they are extremely hard to compute. One difficulty is the complex structure of ARCC, and another is uh, you need to solve the asymptotic case. And also, there are some other uh, efficient computable measures, like uh, log negativity, and also the rings bound. And this kind of uh, income measures have uh, applications in this estimating this kind of operational tasks, but they do not have a direct operational meaning. And here is a very natural and fundamental question. Uh, is there any intent measure uh, with both efficient computable formula and also a direct operational meaning? And the motivation is that if there is, uh, it will make the analysis of entailment uh, easier, and also it will uh, leads to a better understanding of the fundamental properties of quantum entanglement and also has applications to uh, operational tasks. And here is our main result. Uh, we show that answer to this question is affirmative and uh, our main contribution is, uh, is introducing this kappa entanglement. Uh, it's just minimize the trace of some positive definite operator SAB, such that the partial transpose of the state is bounded by this partial transpose of the operator. And here TB is, uh, the partial transpose is given here, just take transpose on the subsystem. And from the fact that this can be solved by same definite program, we claim that this kappa entanglement uh, is efficient computable. And on the other hand, uh, we found its direct operational meaning in the task in time dilution. And we show that the exact in time cost under PPT operations is given by this kappa entanglement. We are going to give the formal definition of this quantity later. And also, uh, this kappa entanglement have many other nice properties like additivity and normalization. Okay, uh, first let me introduce the exact in time cost. Let us recall that um, the central question in time dilution is to quantify uh, how many copies of the bare states do we have to invest per copy of your target state rho AB. And just minimize, min minimize this R such that you can you know, transform this R and copies of bare states to obtain this N copies of the, your target state. And here we introduce this uh, one shot exact in time cost it's just a minimum number of e bits you require to uh, perfectly reproduce your target state rho AB. And um, here omega just represents some set of free operations like LCC or some others. And uh, the exact in time cost just quantifies this kind of rate in the asymptotic limit and it is given by this regularization of the one shot cost. And we know that when LCC operations are free, uh, this exact in time cost is very difficult to solve. Uh, it was uh, proved by uh, Taho and Hordeki that this quantity is given by the regularized uh, Schmidt rank, and it is even unknown for many basic quantum states. And here, uh, to better understand this exact in time cost, uh, people introduce this uh, so-called PPT operations. First, this PPT just means positive partial transpose. Uh, it's just a quantum state whose partial transpose is positive. It's uh, like famous uh, criteria for separability. And the most common set of quantum operations beyond LCC operations is consists of these PPT operations. It's just quantum operations completely preserve the uh, PPT property. And also, uh, it corresponds to the resource theory of uh, MPPT entanglement. And this concept also have applications in uh, in time distillation, quantum communication, and so on. And when PPT operations are free, uh, there are previous bounds uh, established by Ordinal, Planio, and Isert. Uh, however, uh, both their upper bounds and lower bounds are only tied for certain states, such as the two qubit quantum states. And we also know that in general, uh, the exact income course under PPT operations is lower than the case of LCC. 
And here uh, we first record our main results. Uh, we show that the exact event course on the PPT operations is given by this uh, kappa entanglement. And our strategy is uh, first uh, we use standard techniques to obtain this one shot cost. Uh, you, will, you can obtain this optimization problem uh, for this one shot cost. And as you can see, uh, this one shot cost actually is not a semi definite program because it has bilinear constraints. And another difficulty is that you need to solve this uh, regularized of this non convex optimization problem. And here, uh, our main tool is to is using the, uh, we introduce the kappa entanglement and use it to uh, give this sandwiched optimization of the one shot cost. As you can see, uh, this one shot cost just represents the meat of these streams. And the upper bread corresponds to our uh, upper bound is log 2 to the e kappa uh, plus 1. And the lower bread is log 2 to the e kappa minus 1. Uh, actually, this kind, kind of uh, approximation is kind of tight in the symptotic because both this plus one and the minus one are constant numbers. The next step uh, is we, we uh, just write down the upper bound. We plug in this upper bound above and obtain this first inequality. And for the next step, uh, we use uh, the duality theory of same definite program to show this E kappa is additive. Uh, then you can move this n forward to here and obtain this quantity. And then it's easy to show this quantity will converge to the kappa entanglement. You can similarly obtain the, another direction, the lower bound, and conclude that uh, this in time cost is given by kappa entanglement. And as we already established this equality, we can use uh, the same different program of E kappa to discover or explore the applications. Uh, the first thing is because E kappa is additive, then it means uh, the exact income course under PPT operations is also additive. And moreover, we use it to uh, consider the convexity, and we show that uh, the exact income cost here will violate the convexity. And moreover, we consider the monogamy problem. Uh, roughly speaking, uh, in time monogamy means uh, you suppose Alice, Bob, and Charlie share a tripartite entangled state. And if Alice and Bob already share maximal entangled, then they cannot be uh, quantum correlated with Charlie. And mathematically, there is um, this uh, CKW monogamy equality, which means the in time between AB and in time between AC is smaller than or equal to this, this in time between A and BC. And there are no measures that satisfy this quantity, uh, this, this inequality, this concurrence and a squash entanglement. And here uh, we use kappa entanglement to show that uh, actually for exact in time cost, this CKW monogamy inequality can be violated. And okay. The next part of this talk is about, uh, we further consider the channel version, and we study this in time course of quantum channel simulation. So I will briefly uh, wrap up the setting. Here uh, in quantum channel simulation, uh, Alice and Bob have access to two kind of resources. One is shared entanglement, and another is classical communication between them. And the goal is to uh, simulate a quantum channel from Alice to Bob. And as you can see in this figure, uh, the blue color represents Bob's side and red color represents Alice's side. And they can share in time before, and they implement some protocol box to simulate, a effect, to get an effective channel M, and they hope this M can be close or equal to the target channel N. And you can consider quantum teleportation as a toy model. Uh, for quantum teleportation, uh, Alice and Bob will consume uh, one E-bit, 
in the shared entanglement and to classical bits in the uh, protocol box. And they can exactly simulate a qubit noiseless channel. And since there are trade-off between these two kind of resources, uh, we can consider the extreme case. For example, uh, when entanglement is free, the classical bits required to simulate the channel in the symptotic regime is given by the quantum reverse Shannon theorem. Uh, just states that the classical simulation cost for a noisy channel is equal to its entanglement assisted classical capacity. And on the other hand, uh, when classical communication is free, uh, Berta et al. introduced the in-time course of quantum channel, and it's given here, just minimize the number of EBITs you require to faithfully simulate the channel in the symptotic regime. They also prove that the in-time course of channel is given by the in-time formation of the, the regularized in-time formation of the channel. And here we considered uh, the one shot in, in time cost of a quantum channel. Uh, similarly, you can define this uh, one shot cost, just the minimum number of EBIT uh, required to perfectly simulate your target channel N. And if you consider uh, the parallel simulation, which is shown here, just simulate N to the tensor N. And the exact parallel in time cost is just given by the regularization of the one shot cost. And when PBT operations are free, we found that uh, it's also given by this kind of optimization problem. And it's again not a convex optimization due to the bilinear constraints, uh, which makes the, the uh, asymptotic case intractable. And our second result uh, gives a solution of this uh, parallel in time cost. And our king two is this kappa entanglement of a quantum channel. Uh, it's actually in the same separate of the state version and replace the quantum state with this uh, Troy matrix of the quantum channel. And the object function just uh, changed to the spectral norm of the uh, partial trace of this operator QAB. And again, this quantity can be uh, computed by same definite program. And similarly, we obtain the sandwich op approximation of the one shot cost using the kappa entanglement of the channel. And we also prove uh, it's additive under tensor product. And combine this, we obtain the result that uh, for any quantum channel, the exact parallel in time course of it uh, is equal to its kappa entanglement. And as a central quantity in our work, uh, this kappa entanglement actually has many applications. Uh, a very nice property is that it's perfectly connected to the state version. It's just uh, equal to the maximum number of kappa entanglements you can generate via the noisy channel. And moreover, uh, it's, mon it's monotone under uh, PPT super channels, and it also satisfies this amortization quality. Here, amortization quality just means uh, the amortized entanglement after you implement the channel, this difference uh, is upper bounded by the kappa entanglement of the channel. And uh, our next we consider uh, a more general simulation scheme called a sequential channel simulation. And as you can see here, the left, uh, is the scenario of sequential channel simulation. Uh, it begins with some shared entanglement and a set of protocols to simulate these channels sequentially. And the right hand is just the uh, parallel channel simulation we just introduced. And the main idea of the sequential channel simulation uh, is to simulate this channel sequentially uh, in a way such they can be uh, called on demand, on demand when they are needed. Just uh, for example, after implement protocol one, you obtain, you simulate this channel N, and after another round, you get a, uh, another channel N. And another motivation is that 
this sequential channel simulation is compatible with the general uh, sequential channel discrimination. And it's also the most general prelim for quantum channel simulation. And uh, as you can see, actually you can use sequential channel simulation to simulate a parallel case. You can just simply tensor these three channels to obtain uh, n to a tensor n. And then this sequential channel simulation is just stronger than the parallel case, which means it will uh, has a higher resource cost. Our third result is that uh, for this sequential channel simulation, uh, its exact in time cost is also uh, given by the kappa entitlement of the channel. And uh, our key contribution is to establish the sandwiched approximation of the in time cost of simulating n uses of the channel. And as you can see here, the, the lower bound is based on the fact that uh, sequential is stronger than parallel. And for the upper bound, uh, or the achieve achievability part, uh, we construct a protocol uh, which forces the resource after every round to be maximally entangled and then reuse it. And this, this protocol will have pro uh, income cost in this form. And the nice thing is that both this lower bound and upper bound will converge to the kappa entanglement and lead to this result. And our next result uh, is the concept of resource sizable channel and in time cost. Here, uh, you will first image a uh, teleportation simulatable channel N with associated resource state omega, which means you can use teleportation and this omega state to simulate this channel. And this channel, uh, we call this channel is resource sizable if there exists a separable input state uh, row AM, ABM, and also a post-processing LCC channel D here, uh, such that you can seize the resource state in this way. And uh, after, for any of this kind of channel, you can uh, actually uh, study its property, in time the properties uh, via this uh, resource state. And here is the result. Uh, the result is that for any resource sizable channel with associated resource state omega, uh, the sequential and parallel in time cost of the channel is just equal to uh, the in time cost of the resource state omega. And here, uh, this result just quantifies the e bits uh, required to uh, sequentially simulate the channel with a vanishing arrow. Uh, here we consider LCC operations. Uh, with LCC operations in the asymptotic regime. And as we already obtained all these uh, formulas for all uh, these formulas for exact and parallel in time costs, we use them to uh, compute the in time cost for like fundamental quantum channels. Here uh, we have example, we have results for quantum erasure channel, uh, dephasing channel, depolarizing channel, and also the single mode bosonic Gaussian channel. And we obtain all these analytical formulas for its in time cost. And we just, uh, you can see the paper for more details. And there are two examples I want to highlight. Uh, the first is this uh, dephasing channel uh, its definition is given here, uh, it's quite normal. And here we give this uh, in-time cost and exact in-time cost of simulating this dephasing channel, and we plot them here. Uh, as you can see, the yellow dashed line is its distillable entailment, and the blue line is the in-time cost. And the gap between them just show that uh, the resource theory of entanglement for dephasing channel is irreversible. Uh, moreover, uh, for this red line represents the exact in time cost. And as you can see, actually it is not convex, and it just means uh, the exact in time cost under PPT operations for quantum channel is not convex. 
And the, the next example I want to say is this pure loss Gaussian channel. Uh, its action can be represented by this equation, and eta is the transmissivity. And we also uh, compute its uh, in time cost, given here, and H2 is the binary entropy. And we also plot its distillable entanglement, uh, the yellow dashed line, and the in time cost, the blue line. And the gap between them also uh, demonstrates the, that the resource theory of entanglement for pure loss channel is also irreversible. So to summarize, uh, we introduced the first uh, kind of entanglement measure with uh, both efficient computable formula and also a direct operational meaning uh, as the in time exact in time cost under PPT operations. And uh, we also introduced this channel version. It's also efficient computable by some definite program and gives the exact in time course of both um, parallel and uh, sequential channel simulation. And as applications, uh, we first use this uh, Kappa entanglement to, you know, to study or explore the fundamental structure of entanglement. Uh, we show the additivity of exact in, in time course, and we also show uh, exact in time course violates the convexity and also the monogamy qualities. As a second application, uh, we compute the exact in time course uh, of basic or general quantum states and channels under uh, PPT quantum operations, and it can be used to benchmark benchmark the case of LCC. And also, uh, there is a result called resource sensible channel, uh, which simplifies the sequential and parallel in time cost of the channel to the uh, in time cost of the channel's underlying resource state. And this result leads to the uh, solution of in time cost of some basic quantum channels. And there are some like open questions. The first uh, is that as we show uh, the exact in time course under PPT operations is additive, uh, there are maybe some hopes that, or it's quite interesting to look at whether the exact in time course under LCC operation, the regularized log Schmidt rank is, or, is additive or not. And also we have a conjecture in our paper for it, uh, exact in time course of an uh, arbitrary Gaussian channel. You can check out paper about this conjecture. And moreover, uh, it will be interesting to further develop the general resource theory framework of quantum channels. And that's all I have. Thank you for your attention. OK, so we're uh, two minutes early, so we're going to take uh, a few questions. Um, uh, uh, regarding the uh, channel cost for channel simulation between sequential and parallel, asymptotically there's no there's no separation in terms of entanglement cost, but for finite log lengths, uh, it is expected that there is some that there can be some gap. And do you obtain some example which shows this gap? You mean for finite block lengths? Yeah, for for finite case. Did you? You, uh, the gap between between what? Between sequential entanglement cost and parallel entanglement cost. I think we haven't obtained like any explicit results to show the gap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And more questions? Yeah. Over there. Oh. Okay. So. <laughs> it's one here, one here. Okay. <laughs> I have two easy questions. Sure. So first of all, do you have a P version of your entanglement cost? And secondly, can you calculate the entanglement cost for a partial trace? Uh, what is the P measure? But P, I'm asking you whether you have a candidate for a P version of your entanglement cost, like a P Rennie entropy version of your entanglement cost. Ah, yeah. Uh, again, I guess we haven't. Uh, we cannot find an easy way to represent this Kappa entanglement in the like, divergence version. Uh, we cannot get that. 
And if one can get that, one can you know further consider the smooth entropy or ring entropy to obtain the results of, of the normal case, the vanishing error case, yeah. And yeah. The, que the second question is whether you have calculated the entanglement cost for partial traces. Uh, partial trace? Yeah, I mean, you part, I mean, you have a bipartite system, you trace out half of it. And uh, uh, I cannot understand it. <laughs> Maybe we can talk okay. offline. Private. Yeah, sure. Just one more question. <laughs> uh, how physical are the PPT operations? Can you justify uh, having free PPT operations over your system? Uh, you mean how physical? Yeah. Uh, yes. Normally, I don't think it's physical. Just there are some physical PPT operations maybe can be realized by LCC and PPT entanglement. And here is kind of, uh, we just consider the resource theory with respect to NPT entanglement. Yeah. Okay, so more questions? Oh, one more. Yeah. Okay, we'll take the last question. Yeah. So this might be slightly related to Marius's question, but uh, in, when you do your parallelization, are you assuming equal input output dimension? Uh, parallel okay. simulation? Yeah, in your channel, when you run these, oh, sorry, in series, not sequential, not parallel. When you do your sequential simulation, are you assuming the dimension of your input and output systems are the same? Uh, I, I, I think we didn't assume that, just for arbitrary dimension. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, I guess for the time reason, so uh, let's thank our speaker again. Uh,